The RHS gardens are famous for perfect plants. They're where people go for a piece of horticultural heaven. Soon to showcase thousands of exotic plants is the new jewel in the crown at Wisley, the glass house. It's due to open in just a few weeks, but time's running out. Where do we think we're going to be next week? I mean, <laughs> We've got to be done, there's no choice. Hoping to bring the big blousy dahlia back into fashion is Ken Stock, one of the nation's most passionate breeders. Give me some big ones. I want some big ones. I just want them to. I want people to say, "Wow, that's a dahlia." The new glass house at the Royal Horticultural Society's gardens at Wisley in Surrey is reaching the final and crucial stage. If you look at his manoeuvrability, it's not a lot, is it? Glasshouse Superintendent Nick Morgan is carefully manoeuvring Wisley's oldest inhabitants, the 130-year-old Stagshorn Ferns. You all right, Chris? Yeah. Rather poor way to treat the uh, senior citizen with the glass house. Yeah. Set it against the rocks, it's brought the rocks to life. It's uh, fantastic. But those will be there for as long as the glass house is here, definitely. The glass house has been five long years in the making. It's cost the RHS nearly eight million pounds and a lot of headaches. Back in January, the lake had to be emptied of its 1.3 million gallons of water, and then refilled. In March, the fake rock came in for a bit of a hammering. That's how rock fractions. But in the sense, but it doesn't I look like rock. Well, it doesn't look like the rock you recognise, no. Well, it's a rock in nature. When completed, it'll house 5,000 species of plants in three completely different climatic zones. It's now just five weeks before the big opening and there's a new water problem, this time with the concrete pond inside. This is the tropical water lily pond. Uh, we have some concerns at the moment because the water tends to pick up a lot of the salts that's coming out of the cement concrete mix for the artificial rocks. And obviously that's not going to be very good for the plant. So it is coming down a little bit, but certainly not enough yet for us to think about planting into. So not an auspicious start then, but that's ponds for you, big or small, they're always a nightmare. And to make matters worse, they've barely started on the planting. It's early summer, and the dahlias are beginning to bloom. These are the trials fields at Wisley, where varieties of the same plant are grown in the same conditions. Their performance is meticulously overseen by experts, sometimes over a number of years. By the stars out tonight. I don't know if it's cloudy or bright. Fergus Garrett has been one of those expert judges for five years. Dahlias have gone in and out of fashion, you know, and up until recently they were regarded as a common, vulgar plant that was coarse and, and only people with bad taste would have them in their garden, that they were only fit for the allotment or for picking. Colour went out of fashion in British gardens. It all became sort of pinks and pastel shades and so on, and suddenly a dahlia like this, Hillcrest Royal, which is a smashing magenta colour thing, was you know too strong for anybody with, with, with taste. And it was only the core blimey brigade that would, that would grow it. And there's a whole dahlia world out there that's into exhibiting them and getting awards for them, the best 
prize dahlia and it's it's men isn't it they're they're, they're stamp collectors on one side and another side when they like to get the one over their their mates and you know, grow a better plant a bigger plant and and it's a crazy world that i don't quite understand you are the sunshine of my life. there are a lot of amateurs growing dahlias in their back gardens ken stock is one of them his passion is breeding new varieties and he already has three dahlias on the trials field at Wisley. The reason possibly in that men are into dahlias, I think they're a reasonably easy thing to, to exhibit. Get out of the way of the missus. I don't, I'm not really sure, you know, but it's, uh, I know I find them fascinating. Well, we're stripping the flower down to its essential bits. If you, pardon me, pardon. And then those pistils are more or less shut and they're full of pollen. You take that to the flower you've prepared, which has been prepared yesterday. It's hooded and these stigmas majority are open so this one just gently knocking the pollen off because the bee does it far better I mean um, they're past masters you know you can't, you can't beat the bee but if you want to definitely get two flowers uh, uh, one variety to mate with the other that's the only way you're going to do it for sure because the bee will go from one to the other, you know, any flower in the neighbourhood. Now we cover up that again. My wife doesn't mind me using her tights as long as it's no one else's. At the moment, it's just forming the seed right deep down in the ovary of the, of the flower, see? When you see a flower opening for the first time, the very first time has not been on the world before. It is your flower. You've you've done it. It's like a well, you can't. It, I was going to say as good as sex, but I mean, it's 76. I can't remember. But I mean, um, yeah, it, it really is a top thing. And it, you've got a real belter. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna, it just sets your light. That's where the enthusiasm comes from. You know, the passion, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs>